This segment of the Port Jeff Pulse is sponsored by Houndstown in Port Jefferson, home to the happiest dogs on earth. Make it special, make it Maloney. You know, this is how we end the day. I'm excited. We end the broadcasting day <laughs> with what I consider to be a really rock star company. I, I, I know I use that word, but what could be better than what Mike does for a living? 100%. Because he's creating things like Jeffrey Sanzella, our last one, but he's actually also enjoying his product every single day. Hopefully you are, Michael. Well... Not only, as we said, you have to live. Uh, not with a only, <laughs> you got to drink water and stuff like that too. <laughs> Welcome, Michael Philbrick, to the Port Jeff Pulse. Yeah, thanks for having me. We gave you the best seat in the house, overlooking our wonderful harbor. I can see your brewery from here. Yep. For those that don't know, Michael's brewery is Port Jeff Brewery, right? You can, yeah. Yeah, we yeah. We, we literally yeah. can. You brought, <laughs> you brought product. <laughs> He's so excited. This is so cool. You've been in business in Port Jeff since when? Tell us a little history of the company. Um, we opened in Port Jefferson on October 15th in 2011. Um, we probably worked a good year before that, uh, renovating the building, getting recipes together, going mm -hmm. through the licensing procedure, all that not as fun stuff. Um, but we've been there now. It's going to be almost six years, you know, five and a half years at this point. And uh, it's been a crazy ride, I think, from the time we opened so you're a tasting room, you're a destination, and you're a brewery all in one place. Am I correct? All in one little tiny place, yes. <laughs> he keeps referring to tiny. I know. He was saying earlier that you do things in 800 square feet that others you know, have the luxury of, if I will. Yeah. Right? Right. I mean, the uh, economics of Long Island, um, for us, it was a matter of do we find a building that might be in an, like an industrial park or something like that, where we could have three or 4,000 square feet, or do we get a building that's right in the middle of a town that I live in and has some right. passerby traffic? And so we had kind of figured that that, obviously, that the latter was the way to go. Mm -hmm. um, it makes it a little tough um, for day-to-day -day operations because we don't have that space to move around. There's mm -hmm. a lot of calculated moves with regards to how we produce stuff and when we produce stuff. Um, but ultimately, uh, we love it. We're right in the center it's wonderful. of the village and it's uh i think we've become a, a fixture here absolutely yes. uh, oh so it's good. yeah most definitely yeah and that's right. why i was so glad to have you because we like to talk to the fixtures of the community <laughs> uh no honestly because we think theater three is one of those fixtures and right. that was our previous guest you, nice. you could tell us also and i want karen to learn about this putting this product for a second or you know while i'm grabbing it and loving it putting this aside when did the beer revolution the craft beer revolution start on long island um, I think it started right, just right before we probably opened, at least the infancy of it. Mm -hmm. We So if you took active licensed breweries and you counted them, uh, when we opened, we were number 11. There you so go. there was, there were 10 prior to us operating. Um, and those were anything from something like a Southampton or John Harvard's. Right. Oh, John, John Harvard's. Harvard's. Yeah. yeah. Um, that included those or the blind bats. You know, okay. was a tiny one at the time. You had Great South Bay and Greenport Harbor that opened, mm -hmm. uh, of course, Blue Point. Um, but so we were number 11. Now, um, in the Long Island Brewers Guild, I, I want to say there's 39 active breweries. So that was only in wow. six years. So that's, there's been the revolution, I guess, or the boom for Long Island uh, definitely really started to take off within the last three years, four years. So we positioned ourselves unknowing in the but it's right, funny right if you say 2011 you say maybe a couple of years from that right it, to what it's funny right the great recession happened in 2008 2009 that's a great reason to say f it i'm not going back to work i'm brewing beer yeah. right <laughs> yeah. you know to me yeah. they run hand in hand so now you know you probably don't even know this i don't know where we are and where this is going but i'm hearing about people i have good friends of mine that wait in line for three hours in Brooklyn to get fresh beer. There's a, there's some things happening now that are, are, are different, you know? They're just yeah, like cra crazy. And, um, you know, not only in New York or even Long Island, but just, just about all over the Northeast, right, things are happening. I know Pennsylvania's big. Vermont's starting to be big right, on this yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah, there's, uh, well, you have certain beer crazes. You have certain companies that are very small and, 
you know they'll they'll do canned products and get the lines you know um which is great it's awesome especially for that company yeah. when they can sell a product at retail right out of their front door and not have to go right. through distribution channels yeah. necessarily um the distributors might not want to hear that but at the same it's time true. It's, it's great and right. that's yeah. how, right. how how would you not right. want to do that <laughs> yeah right. um so it's good. And I think, you know, overall, you're seeing a lot of the boom craft beer wise because you have a local effort. People are interested in having products grown and made um, it's, locally. And it's so important. when you have your own local spot, it's, you know, it's, it's a little piece of you if you mm -hmm. live by there. And mm -hmm. I think that's important to people. Mm -hmm. And that's why you see, you know, uh, you see a lot of focus now on local breweries. And the other side of that, though, is that most most folks that enjoy craft beer, they also like choices. And so I might not just go to Port Jeff. I might go to Port Jeff or I go up the street to Pool Boy or I go. To me, that's, that is the business. Uh, right. Someone once said to me that craft beer drinking are, you know, they're, they're usually people that are a little bit more or can be fickle. But that works almost to the advantage. As long as you keep recreating the wheel, right, they're going to come back around to you. Right. Right. Yeah. right? right. Exactly. So, so, in other words, you have to know that going into this. And maybe you didn't know that at the beginning. What have been some things that you uh, have revealed to yourself? And it might be just something as simple as all the paperwork you got to do. Right. That, <laughs> you know, what, what did you find that was like, wow, I didn't know this business was going to be like this? What are one or two of the things that uh, came up? Um, well, I think one of the things for us is, you know, like I said, when we started, we were number 11. Um, and there was, it seemed like it took a little while to, there was 13 and 14, and then there was kind of like a, a stoppage lull. for a, right. a lull. And so we were making products like these three guys right here in the middle, uh, the Beach Beer, the Triple, and the Party Boat. And we really focused a lot of effort on branding those mm -hmm. and having those be a regular item that you see in, you know, grocery stores or what have you. And it's worked out well for us, but the one thing that, um, you had just mentioned it or touched on it is that folks like that variety. And so even though people absolutely love the party boat, they want to try, you know, the runaway ferry or they want to try something new. And so it's a, a juggling It's built act into of, the beer drinker. It's, yeah. it's, they, to find, it's like a treasure thing. It's like, and now, you know, I have friends, they're trading cans. I think they're trading oh, yeah. your stuff too. Yeah, I mean, you got certain stuff here. We can get right into the beer if you like. I mean, I what is this? I love the names that you have chosen for some of you, these beers. You should like that. That's the shiznit. You're allowed to say that on air. <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> but it, Look at Ryan. So, Karen, what, what did you notice that's, that there's one thing that's sitting in front of us that should be very obvious, and what is that? What do you, what do you mean? It's all cans. Yes, it is right? all cans. Your father's beer was a yeah. big, hard bottle. Can. I know, because I got cut on many of no them. No way, man. I'm My dad drank Paps. Paps in a can? can. Caps, paps in a can. My okay. dad drank paps in a can. I always remember the bottle. The bottles are out now. Right? My dad was Navy man. But, paps in a can. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so bottle for a while kind of signified better. That's uh, what I mean. With, yeah. With craft beer, but ah. the reality is, is from a standpoint of science and what's the better vessel to hold a beer, can is far and away. Really? Yeah. There's less oxygen. There's no light. Um, and then from the standpoint oh. of a, environmentally and just as a, as a business owner trying to keep costs low, this shipping is... an empty can is far easier than shipping an empty bottle. So as they come to us, the, the, the weight. It's, there's less of a carbon footprint, if you will. Cause you're, I like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so we made a conscious effort back in 2014 to pretty much, we, we purchased our own canning line. And we decided that that was kind of the way to go based off of some trends that had happened in more evolved markets, mm -hmm. okay. places like Colorado or yep. North Carolina. Yep. Um, and it's been working out for us. And so we actually own the first canner on Long Island. Didn't know that. Uh, well, for beer. Um, I'm sure somebody's canning something else. There were other folks that were canning beer. Canned heat. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we were canning heat. Um, <laughs> And, and some folks bring in a canner, so they have mobile canners, which is how we started, actually. We had somebody that would come to us and can really? the beer, mm -hmm. and then until we realized like how a, viable it was. Wait a minute, mobile? Like a vendor. Mobile canner, yeah. yeah. Like a truck pulls up? Exactly. And, and you pump beer. it in? and Well, they, they bring the equipment out, and then we hook our tanks up to it, they can it. And then they go away. It's a which it's a completely cool. makes sense to That's start. That's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, because then you don't have the overhead. Yeah. Um, right. You can kind of test the market, yeah. see how it works, see if you like it. Yep. Instead of investing the money in the equipment. Right. Once we realized, you're uh, like, okay, this is the way. We're to like, go. okay, we need our own canner because the 
uh, although a mobile canner is great, you have to schedule them. They can't be there exactly when the beer is done. So now you're taking longer tank yeah. times and stuff like that. And uh, plus, it it is an investment to get the mobile canner out there. So yeah. you, know, you may not want to can. 900 cases of this you might only want 200 cases of this this week uh or be able to split it between a couple and so now you having can, the canning you, line allows you us can to do that, decide that. you got control yep. so six years old in terms of port chef brewing get, get, being licensed and in business six six to seven years old where is this product and you don't have to go over everyone where is it basically distributed we can drink any one of these at your single location here in port jeff right right so the best place to get an idea of what we do is obviously right, right at our spot, mm -hmm. our tasting. Room. Definitely, because you're gonna get the, you're gonna get all the different products that we make as far as the specialty. Some stuff we only have in the tasting room. This guy, for instance, is okay. really just tasting room only type of thing. Watch so, me open this. Watch you open it. Watch you try it. That's a um, so that has a lot of citra hops in it, and it's more of a sessionable IPA. They would say mm -hmm. um, it's the Shiznit. Uh, so as we were making it, we we were calling it something that sounded just like that, mm -hmm. but as a term of endearment, and then um, and then we basically changed the name for for the sake of not having a better name. <laughs> I I always say that um, the craft beer business, it's like the, ro the the rock and roll business was in the '70s. There's a lot of experimentation. There's a lot of humor. There's there's marketing. I always you know that was like. You know the glam aspect. The, you know it just feels to me like it is. It's a it's a lot of fun in that regard. That is fantastic, by the way. And I can only get this at your location. Yes. Okay. Right now, anyway. Right now, you could find it at like somebody like uh, Joe over at Craft and Say Cheese. He'll have that. That's where I thought um, I saw it. Yep. yep. So he'll have, have a couple on. of the specialty ones um, because he's he's uh, passionate about beer. And feel uh, free to we'll try grow. something, Karen. Yeah. I'm just I'm I'm You're, looking at the labels and stuff. Mm -hmm. I the thing that's that, why that's why I did this for Mike today. Have you ever seen something so insane in your life? I I'm, saw it on the way out of the house today, and I go, "How am I gonna How am I gonna get that beer?" And that's 360. So your beach beer is now 360. That is. <laughs> I love the names. Mm -hmm. Runaway ferry. As I said, that's part of the whole deal. Party boat. Mm -hmm. yeah. Beach beer. Now party boat. Did you get that just from inspiration of being here on the water? Party boat was when. We came out with Party Boat um, after we had opened. So we had been open two years or so before Party Boat came around. And we, uh, when we first opened was during the hop crisis. So it was very difficult to get certain hops. We actually made the Runaway Ferry first, um, which is a smoked IPA. But we hadn't made a regular, real, uh, massly distributed IPA. And so when we came out with Party Boat, we did a Facebook uh, poll. We said, you can name the next beer. And that was the name that came out. And it, so cool. it's Love actually it. a mix. Um, Jamie Partridge, who is our head brewer, it was uh, his recipe, which it's based off of. Um, he likes to go by J Party uh, as Jamie Partridge. It's just kind of a play off his name. Okay. And then Party Boat made sense because we're literally right across from like two or yeah. three of them. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody mentioned it, it just stuck. It was like, hey, that's funny and kind of quirky mm -hmm. and, and it just works. Great. Uh, but, would you like a beer? He has to. It's, it's Ryan's birthday, birthday today. today, our sound engineer, and I would like to offer him. Which one would you like, Ryan? Uh, surprise me. <laughs> uh, we will. Why don't you surprise? What do you drink I, normally? I'm more of a Guinness kind of guy. Ooh. Guinness, this is what you want then. So this is a Russian Imperial Stout. It's called Overboard. Um, this is also play on words in the fact that Overboard was a Russian imperial stout that was aged in whiskey barrels, so over boards. Uh, um, and then it's, this is an insane beer because it's 9.3%, so we kind of went overboard with everything we did in it. It was also <laughs> the last beer that we brewed in one of okay. our original fermenters. So I want to give you some reference yeah, to that. Help You'll me give out. Me, help so me perhaps out. it might be 2%, am I correct? What, what, what her father used to drink, maybe uh, probably 2 to like, 3%? Yeah, probably between 3 and 4, I would okay. guess. Yeah. And, and, the, and the, um, the crazy commercialized beers that are out on the market currently, like the ones that everybody knows. Yeah, a light knows. beer could be like 2%. Okay. So this is like four times. <laughs> oh, my God. Ryan, it, come to the back of me here so folks like, can see like you and wish you a happy birthday. It is. So this, this beer is made with, um, with yeah. roasted malts. Um, it has like a coffee type of smell Good. to it. And that's because when the maltster mm. is Stay working on that particular you. barley, they're roasting it. 
uh, and it gives it that dark, like that coffee. Really? Yeah. So it's that's why it smells like coffee. They roast or it smells like, the barley. They roast the barley prior to, to us. You. Okay. So it comes to me roasted. The the uh, the grain it, it's dark in color. Okay. And that's what gives you the darker color in a beer. And where do you source your raw ingredients from? They come from all over the place. Okay. It's a very. It's, to, there you go. That's Today it. I get the to toast berry. So I, you know, I live in the village. I yeah. work here. So it was funny because I saw another episode that you guys did, and that happened. And it was somebody that was like newer to the village. And they were like, "Did they but, get startled?" But if you're from the village and we were <laughs> having like, that conversation, you hear it, you just kind of stop and wait because uh, you yeah. know. And then three you, times, right? Three and times then you start he's out. talking again. We learned that just, couple. Yeah. See. Bye yeah. bye. Now he's leaving. Right. Three times. Yeah. yeah. DT Barnum. Once because they're moving. Three because they back up. Yep. 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 So he's giving you a warning three times. Karen, I. I, I'm, I'm begging you. I can't. I'm sorry. Are you sure? Yeah, I can't. I can't. It's really it fantastic. Delicious. <laughs> now, it as a Guinness so man, good. are you satisfied? More than satisfied, Ryan says. Fantastic. All right, so why don't you have something with me so we can even talk more? I'm good. I lost the... my water. I have to go t- run heavy it's equipment. Okay. <laughs> uh, so l- 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 enough, enough of the beer for a second. We want to talk about um, how community oriented your company oh, is. This guy? You this know? guy is so. Let, let's talk about the run that just. Wait a happened. minute! This is so funny. I'm drinking beer. He's drinking water. <laughs> Tell it, because you got to operate is, heavy equipment, he right? Drinks beer all the time. Well, so in. The, oh, oh! By the way, it's 7 a.m. I forgot. Right, right. <laughs> but the, um, the, uh, yeah, it's funny because I think people think that we just drink beer at the brewery all the time. No, I like, know, I know. There's, I know. there's things that are under pressure. There's a lot of science that goes on, and there's. This is why I can never be a brewer. If you make little mistakes, you can make, you can make. Big so right. Yeah. yeah, so we kind of save that for for after the the work day. And we're brewing today. We're over there. We are brewing a party boat. So awesome. Yeah. Um, tell me about the events you feel are really important to the company. I know this run is important to the company. It right? is this yeah. run that just happened, right? The run is something that we've been talking about doing for such a long time, and we've done it twice now. So we did it in October, and then we moved it to May. And basically, because of weather and other running events, it just made more sense and to it have it. Just in happened May. two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah just very recently. Yeah. So um, the event's great because we found a way to a capture the attention of the greater running populace of Long Island. We've teamed up with Greater Long Island Running Club mm-hmm. to throw okay. the race. So okay. they have a huge membership yes, throughout the island. Um, we also found that we have a course here that is brutal <laughs> with regards to hills hills like this is not a course that you're just like hey i'm gonna run the brewery run like no. you train for this run yeah. um it's now getting uh, a lot of clout in the runner's world as being a difficult race and so that's great because that that'll obviously pump yeah um applicants serious and, yeah, yeah applicants. people want to come legitimize it so yep we had almost a thousand people run it um, and then it's in May you had a thousand in in May yeah in October just as an example it, it, October was less we had uh, we had so a bunch growing. of people signed up it's growing it also poured the first time we did it so okay. we didn't yes. get a good shot at it uh, with regard it still went very well um, but but I think this one went a little bit better and so one of the things that we decided as we were setting the thing up uh, I you know I live here in the village I have four kids in the village. Um, it's the businesses in the village. I'm very, I'm very, uh, very much a royal, if you you know, from the sake of the Port Jeff Royals. Um, so that is set aside, we decided that we wanted to focus on local charities with the run. Yep. Um, we have the ability to raise a considerable amount of money. So last year, we did Treasure Your Parks to help the new Rocket Ship Park. Yep. Um, this year, we split uh, the donation between um, that same treasure park. parks because that's an initiative that's just been yeah very important to the village i think right now and it looks awesome have you seen their built yeah <laughs> it looks really cool um and then the other was the royal education fund so the oh, royal education okay. fund is you know yeah. essentially an uh i don't even know the you know creating additional funding and grants and uh help for students of the port jeff school system so yes. it's like an offshoot of like the PTA, PTSA. Right. Okay. So they, they do special Royal enrichment educate. programs yes. and things like that. So um, so that was important to me having, you know, three kids in the school system right now and soon to be four. Soon to so, be four. Yep. Um, and then I think just having that ability to, to kind of choose whatever makes the most sense locally is um, is uh, is important to us. So, Great. Congratulations. Yeah. Thanks. It's, it's very satisfying. Awesome. 
It you. is. It's. Uh, it brings it full circle for you. So, fifteen. Did you run this? I, I like to say that I ran the whole thing. Okay. And like I organized it. That's about it. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. It's not it's easy. It's a fifteen k. Yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. My oh. wife ran it like three times. Your wife is oh, in wonderful. amazing yeah. shape. Oh, fantastic. Right. Yeah, it's not easy. It's not easy. I, I've seen her run with like. A triple stroller. Right. <laughs> with three kids in it. Mm -hmm. One of those jogging strollers, and it's triple. <clears throat> and, and you had a pretty serious guy. Is there a winner, right? Wasn't there like somebody that's really runs in an amazing time? Yeah, this year, uh, and I'm, I'm going to watch the we'll, time, we'll, we'll but it was six minutes better than last year. Um, so somebody had trained on that course. People... Uh, neighbors that we have or other village residents had said to me, they're like, we see people out there, like, train, you know, in the weeks leading oh, up to yeah. it. Like, there's people out on the course, running, like, running. legitimately, like, you know, going up hills, and you can see them, like, calculating in their mind. <laughs> how they're... So it's pretty intense. Yeah, that's it's like cool. The, it's, it's cool. So this is on the map, and this will be a yearly event in May. Yes. Excellent. So yes. we want to get that out every year for you yeah. annually. A uh, weekend before Memorial Day. That's when we'll be doing it. And okay. we have the village has been wonderful with us in helping, yeah. um, you know, just organize it. We send out mailers to the entire village to kind of let them know what's going on. Mm -hmm. You still get a couple of people that, are, you know, don't necessarily understand the traffic <laughs> patterns. But I think maybe by the third time we'll have that more refined. So Back to the brewery itself. D describe a perfect afternoon. Like we, I've been there. And what's so great about it, you have people in the arts there. You have a band playing live. You have a few dogs around. It's just like feels so good it just feels natural you know it's like a good place to congregate with neighbors and new people and people in the town people out of the town that whole like concentric circle and we'll show some pictures in the background what i'm talking about that is i think very unique to your brewery i think you do enjoy what is only possible in the middle of a village because uh like i said you you really em embrace live music too right we we do yeah. and Music and pets. <laughs> music and pets, uh, yeah. That's what I'm, I'm thinking of dogs and music, you're right. Yeah. So I've told a story before. When I was younger, I went to Vermont around 4th of July, and we, we got to this town. And in the town, there was a band playing above the general store, and we just ran into it. And come to find out as we're there, you know, people, if you're sitting on the deck of this general store, you could, you could drink beers on the, you know, on the deck. And oh, it was just wow. kind of like a town, like a cool little block party. And I was like, this is the... Just running into this is the coolest thing. This is the shiznick. Right. Is that what I did? I say that right? Shiznit. It's oh, sorry. Right. It's right. <laughs> I came right out with it. This is the shiznit. Yeah, that's it. So I like the fact that I think we kind of recreate that yes, in do. a small way here. You totally do. People come I've around been. the corner and they're like, "What's, What's going, going on, on here?" Yeah. Um, Whoa. And it's, ice cream, beer. Ice right. cream, beer. I can have both. <laughs> well, and that's the thing is that it's not. You know, it's not a rager. It's uh, you, there's people there with their kids and no. their dogs, and it's you know, there's a lot of residents that will walk down, yeah. especially on our Wednesday nights. You yeah. get them; they walk down with their dog. Yep. Their kids get ice cream. Yep. They check out the band, and it's uh, yeah. you know, it's like a yeah. good family. Fun it is a family time, fun time. You don't necessarily see in that aspect <laughs> a rager. Well, you know, like a lot of people. It's, oh, I know. If there's beer involved. They think it's like oh, yeah, like, <laughs> like forty boys. Right, yeah, and it's not It's not that. It's more kind of relaxed and what have you. No, but it is. It's safe. You can yeah. bring your family. I've right. been down there. And if there. you want to jump into the harbor, you can do <laughs> no, it. you can. You can totally do that yeah, afterwards. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, yeah. fantastic. Do you have any partnerships or uh, work with anybody on the water? Uh, you know, I'm sure people honestly go to your place, get a few six-packs, and go fishing, right, for example. The Osprey yeah. folks, yeah, send a lot of people over. They have the... Their boat's awesome. So yeah. we're doing a little event with them coming up, too. Oh, good, good. Yeah, yeah is there anything you want to mention to us in yeah, the next 60 days? coming up. In the next 60, 60 days. days anything the, Os else? the Osprey thing is cool. There's a We're putting a band on their boat. Okay. I want to say that it's July 21st. Okay. Um, so that's kind of cool that's coming up. <laughs> um, and then, of course, we do our Wednesday nights every the Wednesday concert night. concert series. 7 to 9. Yep. Excellent. 7 to 9.30. And we can see that concert schedule on the website, porchetbrewing.com? It's on the website. It's, it's on, on Facebook. Facebook. It's on Twitter. Yep. It's on yep. Instagram. Yep. He knows his yep. social media. He yep. knows them all. Yeah. Yep. I love the logo. So, thank you. So did you design this? I didn't. <laughs> it's very cool. I want you to take that to Phil. That it's very particular cool. beer. This one? Yes. Yeah. You've I had do. this? I have not had that. Okay. That's a cartooned uh, picture of the Park City on that label. I so saw that. It actually is the Park City, which was <laughs> it was over there a minute ago. Yeah. It was. But and it's and it's 
basically like through a Gothamized New York City, like as in the <laughs> ferry went in the wrong direction and ended up in the East River or something. <laughs> There's a story behind every beer, and that's what's right. so great about it. And then this one, I love everything that's printed here on the label. Fishing, swimming, boating, naked diving, contest, paddle boating, canoeing, milf hunting, one. water skiing, tubing, kneeboarding, barbecues, marriage proposals, island hopping, meat, <laughs> surfing. A lot, lot of suggestions there. Vamping. I love right. it. I love it. It's a... Uh, when we started trying to figure out the design for that, we were like, well, you know, you can't necessarily be suggestive with it, but if you just mm -hmm. list stuff mm -hmm. for a label <laughs> approval, that's okay. Oh, so, there is a label, a New York State label approval process? Uh, there's a federal one. And I didn't know yeah, that. So. Uh, when, will you, when will you start putting hemp in beer? Uh, I don't know why I'd put hemp in beer. There, there'd be no reason, right? Not really. Maybe it's filler or something like that. But, yeah. Yeah. I just think maybe, you know, since, like, laws are changing, people would maybe like that. But oh, put, Are there like, beers with hemp? No, that's they why I asked. Hemp and ale. You remember hemp and ale? Yeah. Like, that was 90-something. Okay. Like, maybe 1992. I imagine them. Everything before. else I know has I been, in, you know, oranges. Bitter, bitter just tasting. All kinds of things. Yeah. Right. That's what I love about the business. It's as creative as heck. Yes. Well, thank you, Michael. Thank you for coming on and imparting your product with us. Ryan will be breaking down and being very happy about breaking down today. <laughs> happy birthday, Ryan. And uh, please, you know, stay in touch with us on events. We'd love and we we'll love to support you. We really do. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much. Absolutely. All right. No. Cool. Yay. <laughs>